Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, um, June the 29th, 2013. Yes, you heard it right. June the 29th already. How about that? June isn't, is busting out all over. Isn't it amazing how fast the, yes. weeks, the weeks and the months fly? And what's even more amazing is how quick the seasons seem to go by. Hey, that, I just, that you rhymes. Know what's more I didn't even try to rhyme, that, just, that rhymes. You know what's more amazing? What? How old I keep getting! You're right about that. And, and speaking of how old people keep getting that you don't expect to get old because they're so youthful. Their mentality is just so youthful and and uh, vibrant and, and uh, full of uh, vigor. And energy. And, yeah. Energy. Energy, uh, um, vitality. Ellen Vital. Yes, and, and when it comes to dealing with Republicans, vinegar too, not just vim and vigor, but vinegar. <laughs> you know, but uh, what I'm... What I'm like bitters. What I'm getting, yeah, bitters. Angus, <laughs> Angostura bitters. Yeah. <laughs> Angostura bitters. Ah, the levity bells. The levity bells are are doing well, right, Mr. V for Vendetta Anonymous. Right, it's my buddy. Now, well, I got all all kinds of buddies. I got Billy Jr. the self portrait watercolor Billy Jr. here to my left. I got Mr. Anonymous to my right. I got Old Glory and the Jolly Roger representing the Pirate Radio Network and representing the underground movement in back of me. I mean, come on. And how about my research folders? Uh, my uh, research Yeah. Research? Uh, oh, to that jerk? Yeah. To that jerk off on YouTube? Who doesn't have a very... Better get glasses. That called us hoarders? Whoa. And, and said that we have junk? That, that's not junk. That's loaded with data, my friend. Research folders. Didn't mention anything about the content of the show. Mm -hmm. Just criticized where we do the show, but did not mention anything about the content of the show. And of course, he did, he did not subscribe to Newsletter Censored. So at least contribute but something. But he's able to criticize. But he criticizes where we do it. Now, I mean, contribute something positive or even negative yeah, about like, the content. Like Al Sharpton says, friend or foe. I want to know. Hey, I like that. He said that? Yes, he did. Friend or foe, I want to know. Right. That's true. Knowing. When well, you send him an email. Your right to Friend be... Friend or foe, I want to know. Your right to be heard and your right to hear and be heard and to hear the real truth, whether they be an angel, a demon, a scumbag, or a sweetheart, no matter what they are. Or a sycophant. Or a sycophant, which is the word of the day. The word of the day, <laughs> and I will get into that later. <laughs> but anyway, let me uh, get through with the formalities. Of course, the weather people, like I told Billy Morrow this week, perfect job, the perfect career to have is to be a weather person because you can be wrong every day, and you get paid a lot of money for looking cute, all dressed up, smiling. Yeah, some of those weather girls are pretty damn cute. On the man. Latin stations, have you ever checked out the Latin weather report? They got the girls with the big breasts and the cleavage showing and, and, and the hot bodies. Oh, yeah, and they're very pretty. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, Angel no. Freeze, Ginger Z. Ratings. These are new ones. Ratings, man. ratings, ratings, ratings. But anyway, Remember in the old days we had what you What was that guy with the puppet? Lloyd Lindsay Young. No, no, he had a puppet or something. A news A bald-headed uh, puppet. A news uh, reporter. He was the weatherman. Ah, that was. Good. Wait, that must have been before my time. Well, maybe, but the Jeepers Creepers, you know, in those days, <laughs> the weather was just uh, you know an uh, an adjunct thing. It was not a big deal. The weather's the weather. Yeah. What can you stick be done? your finger out the window and you say, hey, it's going to rain, well, and, you know, the wind is blowing. Listen, whatever. like the emperor of the planet Vulcan said, Depau, she had like a Jewish accent, she said, 
The weather is the weather. What can be done? About the weather. Remember when Spock was fighting Kirk? Yeah. He, when he had the blood. The blood. The, the blood the fever? Fever, yes. Yes, he had to spawn. He had to spawn every seven years. Every seven years day. back to Vulcan. And, 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 and Bones McCoy gave him the triox compound to, to simulate death. I wonder if that exists, triox compound. No, it does not. <laughs> hey, speaking of... Like, di like dilithium crystals, right? Speaking of Star Trek. Yeah. I saw that thing and I shared it also on F uh, f Facebook. What thing? With Kirk. Oh, in the in the and corridor, the, and a young lady in a the corridor there, you know, and looking Bones, like she's giving him a blowjob. Yeah, and Bones said, "I saw that uh, 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 that episode? Uh, episode. Was she giving? I him forget a, why the hell she was kneeling. Was there she giving him a blowjob? Um, no, no, of no, 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 no. <laughs> Gene Rod, Rod and Barry, Rod and Barry would not put that in any of his well, episodes because he couldn't put it. I don't know if he would put it if he could. You know." I mean, what would a woodpecker say, you know, if a woodchuck would chuck wood or whatever? <laughs> well, you know, Spock, I mean, um, the, sh the shows were kind of low budget back then. Well, but they had to be. But it's amazing how they became legendary. Content, content, content. They, there you go. Like the Honeymooners, same thing, super low budget. You saw uh, the... when they were on location, they weren't really on location. They had like a mural of a street. And the honeymooners with fake, uh, fake street lamps and fake buildings, but it was people didn't care. It was the honeymooners, you know. Like, uh, but these idiots. I, t I said to that guy, "You must be a right wing flamer, in disguise." For the first thing he does is he gives us compliments about being uh, progressive. Don't but accept them. But then after that, he just chops us down for nitpicky, stupid things. Now let me get the formalities over with here. By the way, it didn't cool down all that much because, uh, but it's not 90 degrees, it's like 84, but the humidity is still high. Oh, speaking of people that totally shock you when they, when they mention their age, and mm -hmm. they don't look their age at all, Johnny Depp had a birthday very, very recently. He's 50 years old. So happy birthday, Johnny Depp! And I know Johnny Depp plays Tonto in that new new Lone Ranger, baby. Lone Come on, Ranger I think movie. it's uh, out in July or is going out now. What I don't is know. that crow sitting on top of? I Tonto's have no head? idea what that stupid is, thing is. Is that a stuffed bird? I never saw a Tonto with something like that. Yeah, who decided like to put a dead crow on top of Tonto's head? A raven? Uh, is that stuffed or is that a real bird? I have no idea. The the the, the trailer is. A lot of action and it moves very fast. Yeah. So you can't really and he, and he, he's focus on it. Fantastic actor, of course, you know. Uh, it's a Disney movie, right? Like Pirates of the Caribbean. Caribbean. I think it's made by Disney. I could be wrong. Well, I don't know. But great actor. Uh, uh, the re maybe the reason why Johnny Depp looks so young is that he lives in, in France. He doesn't live in the United States. So he's not absorbing all these toxins that we have in the, in the United States. But he looked great. I mean, really, for 50 years old, Johnny Depp looked great. Allowing Monsanto to control our food and poison us. Isn't it funny how the U.S. media is not broadcasting all of the massive protesting that's going on around the world against Monsanto and against corporate elitists? Yeah, there's a... Where the hell is it? Um, oh, geez. Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. Every Monday. They have Moral Monday. Oh, no. And... Yeah, they're, they're, they're because of the uh, governor and the Republican legislature who keep uh, coming up with all these uh, uh, bills to get rid of teachers and firemen and policemen. And oh, they want to they want they want to get rid of teachers and firemen also. Yeah, so it's uh, not just Chris that is paid for by the government. So it's not just Chris Christie. No, these re these Republicans. This is their agenda across the board. You know, people. You know, they got the Illuminati. The Council on Foreign Relations, right, etc. These secret meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, the Republicans have that too. They meet and they have an agenda. Like the Bilderbergs, they have secret meetings. They have an agenda, and that is to shrink government down to nothing. Now, now, when they privatize education, isn't it true that only the rich kids will that's what they want will be able to get a good education? They want, you know, that's how it is right now. 
a dollar spent on uh, education for the poor, the rich spend so much more for it. I'm going and to that's how it was back in the days of the kings. I'm going to and, say, uh, etc. I'm going to say something about that. Oh. It, I don't. I don't have. I only have one um, topic as far as oh. my my initial monologue goes. I with everything have, that's been going on with the Supreme Court and Dolma. No, and no, Dan we'll, we'll, no, we'll, we'll get into it as the show progresses, oh. but uh, I want to say something and get off my chest because of something that happened recently. I will not mention any names. Mm. Read my lips. I will not mention anyone's name for those of you that uh, are nuts and neurotic and paranoid and uh, miss interpret what you hear or read. I'm not mentioning anyone's names. Normally I do, but in this case, I think it's wise not to. But let me get done with the formalities. I am going to formally pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor for this show, which is Progressive Discussions. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I am here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. And this show, as well as all of our shows, are FCC and corporate free. And we don't owe anybody anything. We're not controlled by anyone, no entity. It's total free form hard-hitting broadcasting at its finest so if that man wants to criticize where we do the show and say something like well you should be in a super expensive uh, state-of-the-art professional studio like others have said once in a big while well guess what if you're in an expensive state-of-the-art studio it costs a lot of money therefore you must find sponsors if you find sponsors to uh, pay a salary to the broadcasters and to uh, provide that studio uh, then the sponsors tell you what to say and what not to say mm. there's no free form uncensored FCC FCC free media any longer you have the corporate uh, entity from the sponsors uh, pretty much censoring you and that's not what we're about so we do what we do for a reason to maintain the freedom and the real hard-hitting truth. So I'm going to pipe aboard my co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, which is the backbone of our entire organization. Arr. Welcome, Arr, welcome aboard our progressive liberal starship Mr. Christian the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman how are you doing this week sir? okay alright that's good that's what I want to hear but then again if you're not doing okay feel free to say that also oh yeah feel free to say that and then uh, and then you believe that and then you, you're dead well oh, you know you're dead there are people out there that are neurotically and obsessively afraid mm. to say anything negative or derogatory about anything or anyone even if they're victimized or even if that anything or anyone is wicked these people are so desperate to be liked and loved and approved of and accepted and I call these people unfortunately they're part of our team I call these people the progressive liberals that have that one hang-up that ends up destroying them and ends up becoming their downfall and this is why the Republicans get down and dirty and and fight dirty and this is why one of the reasons why we have a Republican Congress today uh, the other reason is because of all the cultist religious nuts, the right-wing zealots 
in the red states that vote for Republicans. But there are many Democrats that want to be loved, want to be accepted. They are sycophants, which is a fancy psychological word for a uh, the ultimate ass kisser, a big time brown noser, Ooh. a ass and front kisser. If you, if you get my drift, they want the, desperately to be loved and accepted, and uh, they just make me sick. Uh, so uh, my message is: listen up, liberals, and grow a pair of balls. That is the theme for the first segment of the show. And of course, sicko, sicko font is the word of the day, like Dr. Bill told you. And it goes even beyond liberal progressives that want to be liked even by their enemy. They want to be accepted and liked by their enemy. There are many sycophants out there. There are sycophants that uh, are big time company ass kissers where they work in the office. There are sycophants that will uh, have no opinion, no personal opinions about anything because, like two friends of mine, because they desperately want to get in a girl's pants. Mm. If she happens to be very attractive and young, they'll say anything, anything to do that, to reach that goal, and they will agree with the girl no matter what she says. No matter what she says. If she says Barney the dinosaur should run for president in 2016, with uh, with Yosemite Sam as his vi uh, vice presidential running mate, they'll agree with her. If it means getting in her pants, in her pantalones, these guys no will... No mas pantalones. No mas pantalones. <laughs> so they'll agree with everything. So they give up themselves. So therefore they are social sycophants. And then you have the sycophant known as the poor, pathetic mama's boys. Uh, and they, you called it a, a... Oedipus complex. Oedipus complex. Billy Morrow said the same thing to me. The Macbeth. Oedip from Macbeth. The Macbeth. Oedipus complex, which is a sick, uh, deep-seated uh, 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 lust. Love for the mother. Love you mean mother love abnormal love abnormal mother love for the mother for their mother yeah. and and usually the you know what Leviticus says about that you should be stoned Leviticus says you should be stoned yeah, yeah. And, and 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 uh aren't these same men that have this uh, sick love for mother don't 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 aren't the mothers very uh controlling and overbearing well that's how it came about and bossy so about. so so what you're saying is in most cases or all cases the mother starts this damage to to the young man yes by by being overly controlling protective, protective coddling whatever. coddling uh, uh, you know too much love is is no good too much of anything well, is no good it's not love that's it's not real love it's not real love. it's a psychological defect yeah, yeah. so uh, they it's they neurosis. it's a neurosis yeah yeah, well, that figures. That figures. Yeah, they want. They want to be. Of course, in Macbeth's case, it was a psychosis. It was a psychosis. Uh. Yeah. I mean, they they want to crawl up their their kid or their son's ass, and they want to mm. they want to butt, no pun intended, butt into everything their their son does or says, and it, you know they don't give they don't give the child any breathing space. No independence. They don't give them independence, and and therefore the the male child does not grow up at a normal rate, uh, no. emotionally, psychologically, no. does not grow up. Still got an umbilical cord. The umbilical Still cord money. is not cut, and so there's a codependence that develops. Yep. So the mother starts it, starts yep. the damage, and but the son later on feeds into it. Mm -hmm. So it's a codependence. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 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 the sycophants, the uh, in that in that term, the Oedipus complex. So um, it really, you know, the maturity uh, of the the child really uh, is way behind their age mm -hmm. because they they're not allowed any independence. Mm -hmm. All right, that's enough of that. Getting back to the sycophants of life, 
they just they make me sick. But and what makes me more sick is that these sycophants that I'm talking to politically are, happen to be part of our political philosophy. I, I, I don't I don't use the word democrat anymore because it's two-party system and the two-party system is corrupt and we have conservative and moderate blue dog democrats that are selling out their voters the people that are supposed to feel your pain feel your pain are really uh, corporatists and they don't feel your pain um, and they vote with the republicans uh, whether they do it to kiss ass as a sycophant or whether they do it because they're really being paid off. Moolah! Moolah! Like the, the Republicans, uh, particularly maybe the campaign contributions being made by corporations and fat cats. Mm -hmm. So they so when they it's run... Made by the poor. So Dr. Bill, when they run for office, they run feeling your pain. Well, they have to do that. Yeah, to, to get the, yeah to get the but vote. The mula comes in from uh, I think it's in my new uh, my article. There's like only mm -hmm. 2,400 people that give uh, right. bucks to uh, the campaigns. Uh huh. Uh huh. You know, like 2,400 people give thousands. I don't know what it is, 2,000 or whatever. You know, give to the campaigns. The poor don't give anything to the campaigns. They can't. They got no money. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was, so I, the, uh, you know, the, the congressman or senator or whoever, they, because they're being bribed, they feel that they don't owe nothing for the poor. But they do owe for the corporations who gave them money. Yeah. And, and, that's, why, and, that's, and that's why why we get into the problems we're in. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, corruption in politics it, it equals political parties and money. And Jesse, this is why Jesse Ventura... If he decides to run in 2016, he will run with no party affiliation because parties are the problem. And Gary Noll agreed, you know, parties are the problem, um, which we agree also. Um, you know, that's it. Get the money out of politics, you get the corruption out of politics. In order to do so, you have to run as an individual and not part of a party. Now. I have to get on this subject because it's getting out of hand. Paula Dean, she, they, they laid a big, humongous guilt trip on her and she's been crying and crying and crying. Please, uh, 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 I beg of you for forgiveness. Listen, I would have screamed at Matt Lauer, that bald-headed, sycophant, uh, um, ultra-left winger. I would have yelled at him and said, you know what, yeah, I was out of line with what I said, but, but who doesn't say things when, once in a while that, that they find funny? Some people have a warped sense of humor. Maybe Paula Dean found it amusing and, her, and she said it. People say things out of anger. They don't mm -hmm. necessarily mean 100% what they mm -hmm. say, but people, even friends, yell at each other and curse, mm -hmm. and they might call each other names. Get over it. Move on. Lighten up. America is way too thin-skinned. A person should not lose their, their entire business and career over blurting out something stupid. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like, it could be anything. It could be when Jimmy the Greek Snyder told that story about the slave days. He might have been 100% true about that story. That's no reason to fire him, but they fired him. Paula Dean has a big empire. She's got cookware. She's got the show. She's got God knows what going on. Uh, she has many fans. I, I was never a fan of Paula Dean or Rachel Ray or Ann Burrell or the, the real the big fat one what's her name uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I, the I, I uh, the barefoot Ina Garten Ina Garten the barefoot contessa that talks like she's got oatmeal in her mouth she's or, always laughing she's always laughing now now Giada Giada De Laurentiis I like she's got a cute personality but those other people now she's feeding her child Sugar, right from the cradle. You gotta be kidding! You gotta no, I'm be not kidding. kidding! Wait a minute. 
Nutella? Is it Nutella? Which is poison. She's feeding her sugar stuff. What the hell is she doing? Ice with? cream, anything, your cookies, etc., etc. Th these are why so many Italian Americans end up with diabetes and obesity and they drop dead. You know? They, they get hypertension and uh, diabetes and heart disease and cancer, whatever. Sugar, I mean, viruses, bacteria, and cancer cells love to feed on sugar. Mm -hmm. and not By the to, way, not speaking, to mention obesity. Speaking of that, and in a personal uh, type of uh, situation, Oreo this summer. Partially hydrogenated oil. No, uh, is putting out a new cookie. It won't be chocolate, it a, will be vanilla. Two new, vanilla wafers put together. A new poison. And inside... Is what? Watermelon. Oh, your friends know about this? Uh, but she's going to know about it. Oh, uh, and you're never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> it's an inside joke. But yeah. Very Paula, inside. Paula Dean, listen. Everybody complains about everything that does them wrong or annoys them. Uh, and everybody has some racism in them. I mean, uh, well, maybe not due to racism. It's just that people use it. I mean, may, may, back in the '60s yeah. and the '70s, I mean, it was very common for people to use the term, the N word. Well, she the, she told a funny story. She what she said in to to other people or in private. She she might have found it very amusing. Not that she's going to physically, God forbid do it and dress people up in plantation serving clothes yeah, and but that wasn't the that wasn't but, the issue no she was being sued by an employee her well, and her that's son. the real issue her but, and her the, son. Uh, but the other thing is that she asked, she answered a question from the deposition honestly question was have you ever yeah used a racial term hey, i'm sure many blacks and have she said like yeah well, of course I'm i sure. i may have maybe a long yeah, time ago, I'm, 30 years ago, whatever. I'm sure. And I'm, everybody can probably say that. I'm sure many blacks have used the word whitey or. What the hip hop sir will use it all the time. No, no, let's get let's get off the the big guilt trip about about blacks and, and what you were telling me the other day about affirmative action. Let's talk about people saying stuff. I'm sure blacks have used the word honky or whitey. A billion times. The they use down south Louisiana Cracker. Mississippi. Yes, they use you uh, like uh, like the young girl described who she was on the phone with Trayvon before he was killed. Yeah. Uh, Trayvon said, "This guy looks like a creepy ass cracker." 